Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Shabby meets Bling. My project tonight is going to be for my spring decor and my project is going to have special properties. You are watching a Can't Sleep Creations collaboration, the spring and Easter edition. I would like to thank my fellow hosts, Annie from Crafting with Indiana Jones and Monica from Up All Night DIY. You're going to find the links to their channels and this playlist in the description box below. My project solely is focused around this beautiful image from Tracy Vanover Designs and the link will be in the description box below. But as you can see, I only used half the image and I took that image down to my local um, print shop and I had them blow it up. I not only had them blow it up, I had them make me four copies and then I had them do a mere image of that bunny and make me four copies of him as well. So once home the very first thing I needed to do was to cut out my little bunnies and I'm just cutting out one whole image of each side. Uh, one's going to be the front of my project and the other is going to be the back of my image because I am going to make something that I've always wanted to try. I, <laughs> I am going to attempt to create an articulated string figure and my little bunny, the point is to make his little arms move. Now, if you look at the articulated figures, um, the vintage ones, or even people that make them now, you're going to find opposing arms, saying there's an arm on each side of the body and a leg on either side of the body. And you pull the string from down between their legs, which is horrific, in my opinion. But that's the way it's done. And then the little arms and legs will move up and down. So my plan is to attempt to make both the arms move on the same side of his cute little bunny body wish me luck good luck woohoo woohoo i get to i get to work in plywood today and not mdf so I, i'm thrilled about that i am taking my very very thin uh plywood and i am going to trace um both my bunnies on to this plywood. You can see how thin it is. Um, I'm not sure the exact, I think it might be, might be um, a quarter inch. I'm not sure, so I apologize for that. Um, but I'm taking my little bunny and I'm gonna flip him upside down and I am going to add a little bit of painter's tape, um, tacky it up a bit so you don't rip your bunny. And I am going to trace this little guy. Once I finish tracing this image, I am going to trace the mirror image so that I have a cutout of each of my bunnies. Now to cut them out. I am using my jigsaw uh, because it is a big piece. Granted, I could cut them into different sections and take them out and use my scroll saw, but guys, it's still cold out. <laughs> it's cold. I don't like to be cold. And I'm sorry this is fuzzy because my big old head's in the way. But uh, I, I am using my jigsaw and I'm cutting out my bunnies. Ta-da! There's my bunny, my sweet little bunny. Now I need to sand the edges um, because it is a little rough and it is plywood. It's not solid wood, so you're always going to get little jiggy jaggies here and there and so I'm just gonna make it as smooth as humanly possible I should say as smooth as Don jones possible and uh, <laughs> and then we need to make sure that both sides are identical or as close as possible and the best way to do that is to put them back to back and clamp them together and then sand them almost as if they were one piece and that way you can get them pretty darn close to identical. What I'm doing here was the one thing I wish I had not done. I am cutting out the arms of my bunny to use as arms that move. 
Now, I wish I had just cut the paw flush with the body and cut the arm out of one of my remaining three bunny images. But I do rectify this in the end and I am relatively satisfied with the way it comes out. Because I am making uh, movable arms, I need to get rid of the bunny arms that are protruding out here because I'm going to have to cut individual arms anyway. So these arms have to go. So one little paw goes and then his other little poor paw goes. Sorry bunny. One more quick little sand and onward ho. Now for the fun part. Um, I am taking a green, which is close to the green of my egg, and I am painting the edge of my bunny board down around where the greenery is and where the, the little egg is. And I'm going just a little bit on the inside because I don't want to see what I don't want to see. And I don't want anybody else to see what I don't want them to see. So I am touching up all the green areas um, with the green paint. And I will hit uh, both sides of it just around the rim and that edge. And from there, we need to take care of the bunny section. To paint the bunny section, I am using a Waverly chalk paint. It is chestnut. And the green I used on the egg and the floral parts is called a basil a green. And in real life, it is not as bright as what you're seeing there. It is much more muted, much more earthy looking, and very, very pretty. It is a plaid paint, a folk art plaid paint. Now we need to trace the little arms onto our plywood as well because we need the little individual arms that are going to go up and down going to swing the lines around make them dance so i am taking little arm cutouts of the image and i am tracing them onto this plywood and once i do then i will go back to my jigsaw and i will cut out his cute little arms his little paws so sweet now I am painting the area that I cut out of the image and I'm going to try to blend it as, as good as possible <laughs> to the original image. Um, later on I actually do cut out part of the image from one of my extra bunnies and I fill this in. So once again, don't do that if you're going to try this. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else turned out pretty good. This, nah. Nope. Mistake. Wah, wah. So I have my little arms cut out and I have sanded them. And now I'm going to hit them with the hazelnut paint. And I am, it's just easier. I'm going to hit the whole darn arm front and back because I am going to put an image on the back side of this little guy too. Because if you're going to see it from other directions, you don't want just a little painted piece of wood flopping around in the wind. You want you want to see his little arm. So he will be uh, 3D, totally in the round dimensional. So first and foremost, paint the arms. Paint the arms, Dawn. Here you can see what it's going to look like. That little image is going to go right on top. But now I have to determine where I am going to attach his little arm to the body. So I'm just gonna draw a little circle, I am gonna drill a hole, and then I'm gonna check to see if my little screw post is gonna fit in there. And so I do need to uh, kind of bore it out a little more. In the end, I did not use these screw posts. I ended up using the paper clips that you bind um, papers together through the hole with, uh, because once again, this guy has two arms on the same side of his body and these screw posts did not work. Now for a hole in the bunny so the arm will fit. Uh, no. For the marjapage, which uh, I painted on here uh, nice and thick and just applied my bunny. Now, when I went to side two 
of my bunny, I decided to try um, Annie's method. Annie from Crafting with Indy, Annie Jones. She always shows how you paint on the Mod Podge, you let it dry, then you come back uh, with a very fancy iron she has, <laughs> which I do not, and you iron on your image after the Mod Podge is dry. And I tried it just with my clothing iron and oh my goodness oh my goodness I don't know if I will ever do it any other way again so Annie you are so right this method is quick it's easy and it leaves you with a much better product in the end so there's my bunnies and the little arms and you can see I have put bunny arm images on both sides of the little wood arms and I painted the little paper clips uh, so they'd blend in with the bunny. I picked up these wood pile wheels at Zahabe Labe and I am going to put wheels. It's kind of like the old school ones, like those vintagey antique little bunnies. I'm going to use a doll rod and stick it right on in there. And these cute little wood pieces that I used um, in my Halloween project, I'm going to use those as little tiny hubcaps. I am painting all four of my wheels eggplant and it is also a plaid folk art and it is matte and I am just going to paint them this beautiful eggplant color and they are just going to remain like this. No glitter, no fuss, no muss, just this pretty eggplant. Now my hubcaps, they are going to get painted a beautiful celery green. It's from their Americana line and it is a deco art paint. Now when I put my bunnies back to back, I need to have a spacer in between them. So the little mechanisms that I put inside for their little arms to work need to be separated to, to actually be mobile. I came across this uh, mop, this foam mop, at my favorite, favorite resale shop for two dollars. And that's what I'm gonna use. So I have hot glued strips of that foam mop all the way around the perimeter of my bunny. And you can see the holes are drilled there to accommodate the dowel rods for my wheels. You can also see my little rigged mechanism that is gonna make his little arms move. These are just three of the eight glitters that I've used to enhance my bunny. I will also be using some jute, a little wood Easter egg, and some ribbon. I will also be utilizing some of my white embroidery floss to make some little whiskers. I will add the link to this video where I made the whiskers and used them on a cute little vintage black cat. Uh, while thrifting, I picked up this adorable, very sturdy, sweet little frame at the Goodwill. And then I decided to kind of round off my entire little vignette. I put together these images to create something to go in that frame. I have used my glitter, added my ribbon, my embroidery thread, my jute and that cute little wood egg. I have assembled my cute little bunny, wheels and all, and he is ready to roll. Uh, speaking of wheels, there they are. There they are, that beautiful eggplant and my glittery little hubcaps. And there's that beautiful bow that I made out of that pretty, pretty ribbon. That's Dollar Tree ribbon. And I even added a tiny little pearl right smack dab in the middle. Now check out all of that glitter. Woohoo! So pretty. Makes it look dimensional. Those flowers look like they have come to life. There's a little look at how I jointed his little arms. And there's his little whiskers for real. My sweet little bunny has whiskers. So let's answer the question, does it roll? And yes, it does. It really rolls, it really moves. You can pull the string, you can just push it around. It really moves. So check, check that box, it rolls. Question two, how about those arms? Do they really move? Well, there you go. They move, they move as one. You can pull both strings or do them independently. But check, check, box two, the little arms move. 
he really is an articulated string bunny. So very pleased the way my little bunny came out. I am just thrilled. I will be displaying this little guy for years and years to come. So happy. Once again, I'd like to thank Annie and Monica for joining me in this spring and Easter edition of a Can't Sleep Creations collaboration. You're going to find the links to their channels and this playlist in the description box below. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your family, your friends, anyone that loves vintage looking items, Easter and spring decor. You can follow me on Instagram and don't forget to check out my shop on Etsy. I will have new items posted this week. You can ring that bell for notifications of all my upcoming videos. And you can also subscribe to show your support of this channel. I always enjoy hearing from you, so leave me a comment. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.